is up, humanoid nation? God, I gotta get used to looking this way to talk to you guys. Because I've been doing up here. I like this new way of where I put the camera. I gotta get used to it. I gotta shut up. All right, you're not here for that, to hear me talk. Today, reaction is by Cultaholic. Ten mysterious wrestler deaths. Let's see who we got, because the wrestling world is indeed really strange. But when it comes to people dying... There's some shit in between. So let's do this. As wrestling fans, we are all rather regrettably used to seeing our heroes die and Sadly, too yes. often die young. It's a tough part of the business to come to terms with, although thankfully things have gotten a lot better in recent years. Have they really? For a time, yeah. however, bone benders were I dropping guess. at a frankly alarming rate, more often than not the result of substance abuse or other health issues resulting from excessive use of drugs and or alcohol. The job is physically demanding, and the money and notoriety afforded to those that succeed in it, a life in the fast lane, in many instances have led to a tragic end. Man, Umaga, didn't he die like by going to sleep, never waking up, or was that Road Warrior, or was that Road Warrior Hawk that went to sleep and never woke up? I think it's both of them. On occasion, mind you, the death of a wrestler jumps out as especially mysterious, even for an industry that has been plagued with ones that are hard to make sense out of. So I'm going to take a break from knob jokes for just a little while, knob because it's jokes. important to remember those wrestlers that we lost in weird, bizarre, mystifying, or otherwise unexplained ways. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 mysterious wrestler deaths. Join, Join us. us. Number 10, Art Bar. Art Bar would have likely been a much bigger the OG name had of the a nefarious Splash. past not kept him out of work in the United States. Art, the son of wrestler and promoter Sandy Bar, gained popularity as Beetlejuice, a gimmick based off the title character from the Tim Burton film of the same name. Local attention stemming from some legal trouble kept him out of Oregon, but he ended up in WCW as the Juicer until his previous juicer. indiscretions came back I to haunt him about and the he was let go from there too. With the US of A out of the question, Barr relocated to Mexico where he found his greatest fame as Love Machine, teaming with Eddie Guerrero to Eddie. form the sensational Los Gringos Locos. He was a top star, but also missed his family and friends, and to lessen the feelings of homesickness, began abusing drugs and alcohol. Yeah, that's his how it goes. His break looked to be on the horizon, and the plan was Wrestling for him and Guerrero to wrestle in drugs. CW. He never worked for Paul Heyman, however, as he passed away on November 23rd, 1994, at the age of 28, before he could debut. Initial Damn. reports claimed an aneurysm or heart failure as the cause, while some outlets cited a drug overdose. While he did have drugs and alcohol in his system at the time, the cause of his death was officially ruled as unknown circumstances. Number 9. Steve Bradley Though he didn't make it to WWE TV as a member of the main roster, Steve Bradley was well known to those within the company. A standout in development leagues like Memphis Power Pro and Ohio Valley Wrestling, Bradley was one of a number of talents that- The guy looks like a little bit like Christian York, but he was an OVW, right? So I- uh, I don't remember- OVW has been a while since I've seen that. Maybe I've seen him, on the I just forgot. Call up. It never arrived, though Bradley did work non-televised dark matches and appear as an extra on WWE programming. His biggest accomplishment was arguably his Power Pro program with Kurt Angle over the group's heavyweight title, which won underrated feud of the year in the 1999 Wrestling Observer Awards. Oh, the Olympic young hero Kurt even Angle thanked back in the Bradley day. during his 2017 Hall of Fame induction speech, citing him as an unsung hero. Bradley was also a three-time HWA Tag Team Champion with Val Venus and Lance Cade, and was helping book OVW when he was released in July of 2002. Post OVW, Bradley ran the Wrestling Federation of America promotion and opened the Top Rope Wrestling Academy training school. Years of wrestling and a chronic knee injury had left him in serious pain and, sadly, addicted to heroin. That, oh Tragically, God, heroin. he was found passed away in his parents' stolen car on December 8, 2008, in a parking lot across the street from the school he used to run. Oh, that he is, was just 32 that years is old. Sad. There were no witnesses and the cause of death... Stealing your parents' car and winding up in a parking lot at your old school. That, 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 that's... A it, that's depressing, man. That's really depressing. Death remains undetermined. 
Number eight, Gino Hernandez. Gino. With his dashing this good looks dude was and long paranoid. Hair, Gino Hernandez could have done very well for himself as a pretty boy babyface in the southern territories he worked in the 70s and 80s. As a heel, though, he was on another level, especially when matched with the beloved Von Erich brothers in the Texas-based World Class Championship Wrestling. Teaming with Gentleman Chris Adams, another wrestler another who one. died in odd circumstances when he was shot and said, killed by a former I was just about friend, to say another Gino one. had no trouble riling up sportatorium crowds as he antagonized Fritz's boys. The handsome half-breed, as he was known, won many titles and drew big business and television ratings, especially when partnering with Adams, the other half of the so-called dynamic duo. But, like Dynamic many a young duo. wrestler, the fame and fortune came at a cost. It's no secret that the world-class territory was rife with substance Drugs, abuse of and scandal, and Hernandez inevitably went down the wrong path. After uncharacteristically no-showing a scheduled house show appearance, WCCW officials and police officers broke into his apartment, where they discovered his body on February 2nd, 1986. He was just 28 years old. Dude, that's Hernandez so had been young. deceased for several days, and it was old. initially Imagine thought to have been, been a homicide, doing. though ultimately ruled a drug overdose. Skepticism remains, though, and many who were close to him still maintain that foul play was involved. Number 7. David Von Erich the Von Erich family is the most tragic in wrestling history. For all extremely tragic, there's only one left, though. Kerry Von Erich? No, Kevin Von Erich. And he has his two sons, which are Marshall and Ross. But the whole Erich family dynasty, oh my god, that's just very depressing. Of their success, the Von Erichs suffered massively, with five of Father Fritz's six sons passing away before he did in 1997. Of all the Von Erich boys, David was viewed to have the most potential. Dubbed the Yellow Rose of Texas, David was a young heartthrob and regularly challenged for the NWA heavyweight title, taking on Harley Race Young Heartthrob and regularly Young Heartthrob, it's the 80s. Yeah, it's the 80s. It's a different look back then. That was indeed a hard frog back in the 80s. He challenged for the NWA heavyweight title, yeah. taking on Harley Race and Ric Flair in losing efforts. In late 1983, it was believed that David might be due to win the big one as he engaged in an intense personal rivalry with the Nature Boy. The title bout was scheduled to take place sometime in April of 1984, but it never happened. David was found dead in a Tokyo hotel room in February of that year while on tour with All Japan Pro Wrestling. He was also just 28 years old. Again, 28 Rumors years ran old, wild died in the so aftermath, young. With much speculation surrounding the uh. circumstances of his passing. While the official cause of death is listed as ruptured intestines due to acute enteritis, most believe it was due to either a heart attack or a drug overdose, with Flair claiming in his autobiography that Bruiser Brody helped remove evidence in order to cover an OD up. David's brother Kerry later beat Brody Flair like to win the NWA heavyweight title in his honor. But yeah, I can see Number Brody six, Brody the Jimenez doing that. brothers. Luchadors with Wait. dwarfism in his honor. Number six, the Jimenez brothers. Ooh. The Jimenez bro Jimenez, okay. Luchadors with dwarfism, prostitutes, oh, robbery, right. and a fatal drug overdose. Sounds like the plot of a really bad book that I definitely want to read, but unfortunately, it's the very it's true and tragic tale of two popular wrestlers. The Jimenez brothers were twins who competed as minis in Mexico and beyond. Known in their homeland as Espacrito 2 and La Parquita, one uh, of the brothers, Alejandro, okay. also showed up in WWE for a spell in the I didn't late know 90s that was dead. Tarantula and Mini Mankind. Alahan wait, 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 for a spell in the late 90s, performing as Tarantula. Oh shit, they were Mini Mankind and Mini Vader. All right. And Mini Mankind. Okay. Alejandro and his brother Alberto were both found dead on June 29th, 2009, at the age of 35. After working a both show, they were escorted back to a Mexico at the same City time? hotel room by two ladies of the night. Oh, one was shit, 65 that... years old, and the other was referred to as the fat one by police. You know, just to make this story a little more colorful. While yeah. in the hotel room, the women put eye drops in the luchador's drinks in a bid to sedate them before robbing them. But they failed to take their victim's small stature into account, and the dose ended up killing them. The yeah, sort of small details dudes. of the case brought worldwide because, attention. Like, they're not like regular tall people. Like, they're not regular people. Like, uh, you gotta be careful. It's like, that's enough. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You overdosed the fuck out of them! And a year later, both women were convicted and sentenced to 47 years Good. in prison for their crimes. A film depicting the events was released in 2015. 
Number five, La Fiera. La Fiera. More bad stuff in Mexico now with the murky case of La Fiera. Never heard it's of La Fiera, but okay. It's a name that won't be familiar to most, and that's something of a shame because in his day, La Fiera was one hell of a professional wrestler, widely considered one of, if not the best luchador of the early 1980s. He worked predominantly in Mexico, but also enjoyed success in Japan, where he was handpicked to be the first opponent for Tiger Mask 2, portrayed by the legendary Mitsuharu Mazawa. A gifted high flyer and technician inside the squared circle, La Fiera's biggest contribution to the business may have been the invention of the frog splash, oh. which he used regularly in the 1980s okay. and was adopted by Eddie Guerrero and then Art Barr and then... Hey, La Fiera was the originator of the frog splash. Okay, my bad. I'm sorry, I thought it was Art Barr, but it's La Fiera a million others. The former NWA middleweight champion was involved in some shady stuff though, and clearly ran with a very bad crowd. Semi-retired from the business, La Fiera was heavily involved with hard drugs toward the end of his life, having previously served a prison sentence in the 90s for dealing. Not much is known about his demise other than he was mugged, assaulted, and stabbed five times and left for dead, damn. eventually succumbing to his injuries in a Mexico City hospital on September 10, 2010. You don't want to be in a Mexico City City Hospital, my No guy. one has ever been charged That's not with a good crime. thing. Number four, Ricky Dozan. Ricky Dozan. Known as the father of Puro Resu in the Land of the Rising Sun, Ricky Dozan was responsible for popularizing the sport of professional wrestling in Japan. He established himself a star and a national hero by beating American wrestlers, including the legendary Lou Thez, who he defeated to become NWA International Heavyweight Champion in 1958. His bouts drew enormous crowds to arenas and were watched by record-setting amounts of people on television, to that up. all good things must come to an end, and in his later days, Ricky Dozan developed a reputation for being a bit of a hellraiser. On December 8th, 1963, Who's tell Ricky him no? Dozan was out no? in Tokyo and got into an altercation with a Yakuza member, which resulted in a scuffle and ended with Ricky Dozan getting stabbed in the abdomen. Damn. Surgery on the Don't injury was the successful, Yakuza. but the star's drinking made his condition deteriorate, and despite a second surgery, he passed away from peritonitis a week after the initial incident. He was 39 years old. The Yakuza member served eight years for manslaughter and, showing remorse for his actions, visited Ricky Dozan's grave every year on the anniversary of his passing, as well as apologizing to the wrestler's sons. Damn! The Yakuza kills a man but goes to honor him and feel sorry and actually says sorry to the son. God, Ricky Dozan, man! Ricky Dozan! Holy shit, if you can make up a Yakuza member, do that after you're dead. Damn. Number three, Abismo Negro. Abismo the bizarre Negro. death of Abismo Negro stunned the world of Lucha Libre. While we've already looked at some examples of wrestlers from south of the border passing on in mysterious circumstances, examples of such deaths are few and far between, and even by wrestling I've standards, most of his impact was an odd one. Abismo Negro had been a star in his days. homeland since the early 90s and was Didn't a much as Mexico and main matches. eventer known for but his Abismo brutal was a tombstone beast. pile driver, the most devastating move in Mexico. He also worked a handful of matches for WWE in 1997 and turned up for TNA huh. in 2004. Like was, many before and that. after him, he suffered from drug addiction issues, which ultimately hampered his career as they affected his behavior. Hirings, firings, rehab, no-shows, comebacks, and disappearances marred his final years. On March 22nd, 2009, Negro was found lying face down in a river in the small town of El Rosario. He had been travelling on a bus some 12 hours earlier when he reportedly suffered a panic attack and threatened the reluctant driver to let him out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, panic attacks. I've been through those. They're not fun at all. I feel so sorry for him. Having panic attacks, Jesus Christ. Uh, rushing on a bus in the middle of nowhere? Jesus, like, this dude. Oh, wow. The... What he was going through, oh my god. He informed his wife via text message that he was lost, while the concerned bus driver informed the authorities who subsequently found him. He was 37. The official cause of death is asphyxiation via drowning, but nobody really knows what happened to him once he got off that bus. Number you two, never, you, Ricky Lawless. You never know, man, with that panic attacks, you just walk around aimlessly, trying to calm yourself down. Who knows where he went and what happened? Panic attacks are not fun. 
Ricky Lawless, Ricky Lawless wasn't Ricky a Lawless. big name nationally, but he was well known on the mid-Atlantic independent circuit in the 80s and was the inaugural American Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion. Though moderately successful himself, Lawless was more well known for training others who would go on to greater fame such as Axel Rotten and Joey Maggs at his wrestling school. Outside of the ring, Lawless was- Would you really call Joey Maggs successful? Axel Rotten, yes, to a bit. But really, Joey Maggs? What has Joey Maggs done? I don't remember him from WCW in the Jobber Tag Team. I know more about Axel Rotten than I do Joey Maggs. That's... Who is Joey Maggs? ...was a known party animal who perhaps didn't always make the wisest decisions. He was found shot to death on November 30th, yeah. 1988 in Baltimore, Maryland. He was only 28 years old. Again. The Toronto Star newspaper erroneously reported that Lawless had been killed by a former tag partner named Vladimir Koloff, but it was later discovered that the perpetrator was a man called Raymond Swartz. Swartz had been motivated by the fact that Lawless had been having an affair with his wife. Uh, that would do the it. story gained more notoriety when Hustler magazine published a piece on it in 1991 entitled Shotgun Justice, a pro wrestler's Can final Can we get Pacetti's face out of there? Number one, Dino Bravo. Gunned down Dino by the Bravo mafia. was one of the top the stars mafia. in the Montreal Territory in the 1970s and 80s, but with that good time having run its course and WWE's impending global domination on the horizon, he joined up with Vince McMahon's out. Outfits. Nicknamed the world's strongest man, Bravo was a solid heel and had a decent run with Titan Sports. He didn't win any titles, but he was involved in some notable feuds with the like. He, he had the Canadian Championship for a while. Not recognized, but he did carry it around the Canadian Championship. That was a cool looking belt though likes of Hacksaw Jim Duggan and The Ultimate Warrior. Dino was phased out as the years went on, however, getting pushed further down the card and eventually losing more than he was winning. He left WWE in April of 1992 and subsequently retired. But with no other real skills or experience outside of wrestling, and used to the lavish lifestyle his vocation had afforded him and his family, he turned to organized crime in order to make payments, getting involved in illegal cigarette smuggling in Canada. This dalliance would lead to his downfall. I gotta say, if you don't have any skills or whatsoever other than wrestling, holy shit. Because Dino Bravo, all he did was wrestle. He didn't have anything else. And then, yeah, what else are you gonna do if you have no skills other than wrestling? Join the mafia, I guess. And he was legal cigarette smuggling in Canada. This dalliance would lead to his downfall, and he was found dead in his home on March 10th, 1993, shot 17 times. 17? He was 44 years old. His homicide has never been solved, but it has been said that Bravo knew his days were numbered, and the common belief is that the perpetrator was likely someone he knew. Pretty much, because, like, he died, he was found dead in his own home. Like, I'm guessing he knew. Who it was because like he wasn't fu I, I'm guessing I don't know much of the story but all I know is he found in his home if he's gonna keep, he knew his time was up he's not gonna fight back as you know when you own the Montreal Mafia a lot of money yeah but anyways that's interesting of what's going on with all these uh wrestlers I need to look up those minis again like is their mini mankind and mini Vader I just need to see the twins go at it That'd be kind of hilarious. But anyways, that's it for now. Humanoid... Hum blah, 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 blah. Oh my god, this cold is getting to me. <laughs> Take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid Freak out. Bye. Pasito a pasito, suave, suavecito. Nos vamos pegando poquito a poquito.